Hello, I'm Seema and welcome to part 6 of the chapter Chemical Bonding and Molecular Structure. Before we come to chemical bonding, the various theories of chemical bonding, we should be aware of certain bond parameters. There are these six bond parameters which, that we should know of. The first one is bond length, bond angle, bond enthalpy, bond order, resonance structures, and you should have the idea of polarity of bonds before we actually come to the different theories. That is the Vesper theory, the valence bond theory, and the molecular orbital theories. Let us deal with these bond parameters first, one by one. The first one is bond length. Let me remind you that here we are dealing with atoms in chemistry atoms and molecules which are extremely small. They are so small that it is impossible to directly study them, to directly see them. So we have to use certain uh, microscopes or certain instruments that can measure or see items or substances which are so small. So we use techniques like the X-ray spectrography, the electron uh, diffraction technique or the X-ray diffraction technique or spectroscopy and by these different methods we are able to get an idea of atoms or molecules at that size. Again, if we imagine atoms to be spheres, if we imagine atoms to be spheres and we imagine when they are bound these spheres are together, then how would you define bond length as? Let us say that these are two atoms, atom 1 and atom 2 and as you see I've made them of different sizes so atom 1 and atom 2 should be atoms of different elements and when they join together they form a bond and when they form a bond the distance between the nuclei of these two atoms should be the bond length. The actual definition is that the distance between the cores of two atoms that are bound together is known as the bond length. The cores consist of the as I told you in the previous videos, that if you imagine an atom to be a walnut, the shell is the outermost uh, shell and that is known as the valence shell. Everything inside the valence shell is known as the core, that is the penultimate shell, all shells under it and the nucleus, they together form the core of an atom. So the center of the cores of two atoms, uh, if we take the distance between those two, that is known as the bond length. Why do we exclude the outermost shell when we talk of this? Why do we talk only of the core? That you'll be able to understand if we, if we learn about the covalent radii, the van der Waals radii. You see, when atoms combine together to form a covalent bond, the outermost shell of the atom, it, of the two atoms, it overlaps. And that area of overlap has those electrons which are being shared. A covalent bond is nothing but a shared pair of electrons and the outermost shell, the orbitals of the outermost shell have to overlap in order to have those, uh, the pair of electrons, one being contributed from each atom in that area between the two nuclei so that they can be equally shared by the two atoms. So when this overlap takes place, the overlap when you're measuring distance between the two nuclei, if there's an overlap, if you imagine these two atoms which are identical, and uh, uh, please excuse my poor drawing skills, I could not make them identical, but let's imagine that they are identical, then this atom would be here, and this outermost shell is here. And this is the area of overlap actually, which makes them, which presses the two together. And in this area of overlap are the two electrons present. We, this is just an imagination, which are being shared equally by the two atoms. But this area of overlap, how does it affect the length? That is the radius. How does it affect the measurement of the radius? The actual atom, the radius may be from here to the end. But since we are not thinking of the outermost shell and we are only th talking of the core, we are at the radius that we measure here in a covalent radius is actually smaller than the actual radius of the atom. Let me just show it to you uh, with the help of these balloons. These are two atoms, identical atoms, which are bind bound together. If they were just touching each other like this, the, we could have measured the distance between the centers, that is the nuclei, and if we would have joined the two nuclei, we would have got the radii, half of that would have been the radius of one atom. 
considering that both of these are identical, the same element, the same atom, and they are joined together like this, just touching each other, then the distance between the nuclei, half of that distance would be the, would be the radius of this atom. But since we do not have individual atoms to study and we are as it is using the uh, spectroscopic techniques and the X-ray diffraction techniques to get to the distance, the molecules, at least two atoms which are bound by a covalent bond due to this overlap, the, they are not actually touching like this, you find that they are pressing together. Since the area of overlap is like they are pressing together and now the distance between the two nuclei is actually lesser than what it actually would have been if the atom was alone. So we have, these are our limitations of measuring the radii. But we should know that the radius that we talk of would either be a covalent radius or it would be a van der Waals radius. And in the chapter of periodic classification, I told you what ionic radii are also. I would ask you to go to that uh, video and check what I told you about ionic radii. But right now, since we are talking of chemical bonding, which is covalent bonding, I will deal with this. That the covalent radius is when two atoms, the outermost shell overlaps, and hence the actual radius of an atom uh, is, should be bigger than what we calculate as the covalent radius. So if these are two identical atoms, both of them should have the same radius and the area of overlap is squeezing it, as it slightly, but half of this distance should be the radius of one atom. So that is how we calculate the covalent radius. Another possibility is, uh, or how you calculate the radius is van der Waals radius. You have this molecule and I've made two of these same molecules and these two molecules let us assume that the bonding is there's a covalent bond between these two atoms and there's a covalent bond between these two atoms but these are two molecules which are just lined together they are not bound to each other they're just adjacent to each other and we assume that this is in the solid state and if it is in the solid state we are assuming that these molecules are touching each other and if they are touching each other, since there is no bond between them, they're not pressing against each other and they are, they are barely touching each other. There might be a slight distance between them that we don't know of, but there is a, they are not actually going into, they're not occupying the space of each other. Such an attraction where the atoms, they stay together like this is known as van der Waals attraction and the the distance between the nuclei of two such atoms which are bound together and van der Waals is only an attraction it's not a chemical bond so they are together due to van der Waals forces so the distance between the nuclei of such atoms which may be identical half of that distance would be the van der Waals radius of that atom so this is how we calculate the different type of radii and when you have, when you've calculated the van der Waals or the covalent radius of atom 1 and atom 2 in the same manner, then the sum of these two would give us the, would give us the bond length between these two atoms in a molecule, right? So this was the first parameter that is bond length. Let us now come to the next parameter that we should be aware of and that is bond angle. As the name suggests, the angle between the bonds. Different orbitals, they overlap to form bonds between atoms. Now, when you have three atoms or more than three atoms, then there would be one central atom and the other atoms would form angles around it. The bonds would form angles. So these angles can be measured they are certain, they are specific angles for different molecules and as we go on with our studies, we study in details and we will be able to explain why certain molecules have certain angles and certain structures. It is these bond angles which, which give structures, definite structures to molecules. For example, in water molecule, you have hydrogen, oxygen and hydrogen and if you imagine these two bonds to be lines between the hydrogen and oxygen then if you draw an angle if you just study the angle between again by spectroscopy it is possible to identify where the atoms are and when you are able to identify where the different 
atoms are you can draw lines to make the uh, bond angle so the bond angle in water molecule is 104.5 degrees if you take a molecule of beryllium chloride BeCl2 we find that it's a linear molecule it has an angle of 180 degree the two chlorides are on the two sides of the beryllium and if you take a molecule of BF3, boron trifluoride, we find that the three fluorines are attached in a plane in a triangle, uh, in an equilateral triangle. So this, uh, if these fluorines are occupying the three corners of the triangle, then the angle to the central atom for each, each of these angles would be 120 degrees. So, Bond angle is a parameter that we should know of. It gives us an idea of the molecular structures. The bond length gives us an idea about chemical bonding because the bond length is related to the strength of the bond. The shorter the bond length, the stronger is the bond. So these are parameters that we should know of. Now, in the next video, I'll explain the, we continue our discussion about the bond parameters. If you found this video helpful, Please give it a like and subscribe to my channel, recommend it to your friends and please keep returning for more videos in chemistry. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.